we're back again and um, I think the next phase is to add a touch of extra color to the backgrounds to see how things are working out and I'm starting over here I was uh, watching looking at a couple of pictures that I took from this uh, painting it always helps me a lot looking at pictures because that gives you a slightly different perspective and many times it becomes clear instantly what needs to be done and in this case I felt like a little bit of raw umber would do would be great here in the background um, now that I am um, further in the process of painting my palette has become quite uh, clear so I'm you know I have more browns I have a burnt umber I have a warm sepia I can show you here but I use this raw umber in the bells here and that is the reason that I will stick to the raw umber a little longer maybe even till the end of the painting the finishing because that will uh, pull the painting together as soon as I start using too many colors um, this drawing will like fall apart or that that could happen so I stick to the raw umber I have uh, three Pentel water brushes and this is the largest one it's a very very big one uh, and I'm going to test whether this is working or not so I'm adding water first most of the time I prefer finer brushes but sometimes a larger one is my preference and as I said before there are great watercolor artists who make the most beautiful paintings with lots of detail with one quite large brush I don't know how they do that but clearly if a large brush fits your hand and style then you can do wonderful things with it so picking up the raw umber it's over here and let's have some fun So, let's add a little more here. Christmas holidays are not over yet. Today it is um, Thursday. Thursday the 28th 8th of uh, December. And uh, yesterday uh, we had a great... Uh, third Christmas Day dinner a couple of my brothers and sisters with their children were uh, at uh, our home 
having dinner and um, after dinner my brothers and sisters and I and my sister-in-law one of my sister yeah my sister-in-law I have only one sister-in-law <laughs> She, uh, uh, we went um, out to do an escape room. I'm picking up a little bit of Payne's Gray right now. Yeah, we went out and we went to an escape room in the city of Dordrecht. And maybe you've, you know the concept escape room. They lock you up in a room and then by doing all sorts of puzzles and searching for keys and codes you will have to uh, to free yourself it was really nice let's uh, create some contrast over here as well adding water first so we were with the with this group of six people and uh, we had one hour to uh, escape from the room and uh, thank goodness we ex escaped in time <laughs> I've done several escape rooms the last couple of years and you know sometimes it is very difficult to uh, escape in time but this time we, uh, we managed there was uh, 40 seconds left on the clock. I'm picking up Payne's Grey just a tiny bit. Look at that. This is the, this is so much fun. This is the joy of watercolor. There's a lot of water here. And the fun thing with these escape rooms is that uh, you need each other. So it's really helpful for... Uh, you can do it with uh, your colleagues as a team building. And um, you also discover one another's talents. I love this here. This is a happy accident. I will leave it in. Lovely. Yeah. So you you see uh, it, you find out each other's talents. So it turned out one of my sisters, she can calculate. They're so fast, you know. When you go into a um, in in a uh, escape room, you cannot take anything with you, not your phone no calculator <laughs> and we had to do some calculations quite large numbers multiplying and I hadn't started yet and my sister already knew the answer <laughs> goodness gracious I never knew she had she was so good at this uh, we call it hoofdrekenen in Dutch Head, head, head calculating. <laughs> Look at that. This looks just gorgeous. I have to say this very big Pentel brush is doing great for this type of work.
want to uh, thank you for still being around and joining me in this painting process. You know, it takes a lot of time. And I'm showing you everything. Now I'm going to put in a touch of, of phthalo green light. And a little more. I can imagine that uh, for many people these video series are uh, too slow. But you know, I'm showing you reality. This is how it works. There's a hair over here. I want to get rid of it, but well. And a little more of raw umber. I used to get very frustrated with myself when I wanted to, to make art because in my mind I had to be finished fast and now I understand that painting takes a lot of time. I knew that the old masters would sometimes work for many months on a painting sometimes even longer years but for some reason I still thought I needed to be fast but how can uh, that that is impossible of course because a well-trained painting master would take mon months for a painting and me, a not so well-trained, um, thinks that she should finish this in a couple of hours. That is... Um, What the psychologists say, an irrational thought, it is complete nonsense. So, and I have to say, every, every stroke that I put on the paper, whether it is with a brush or a pencil, I enjoy it so much and you can never have too much joy and too many hours of joy so the longer it takes the more joy I have well I feel I need a touch of red here so I'm going for the Windsor red Picking up a little more. I really, really like it. This is going so well. Now let's take a look over here. This is interesting. There is a red in the background and there is red in the forefront and for some reason this feels good. I want to tone things down in the background just a tiny bit, but not too much. So I will add a touch of water here. And then a tiny bit of raw umber, 
just a touch. Cleaning my brush. And then distributing this I really like that. It's a very subtle change, but it works. So, tiny bit extra. So, I'm increasing the um, contrast without losing the red the warm tones in the background. I started this painting with this idea that the painting should emerge from the background and here this is really it is really happening here really nice I think I will add a touch of Payne's Grey here. A little more. That is just great. I am now, there is still paint grey here, now I, I, look, this is what I always do and then later on I think I should have add water to the paper first, but for some reason I won't, don't want to spill any paint, so every time I clean my brush when, while there is still a little bit of paint on it, it feels like I'm wasting paint. Here is the green, just a touch of that light green here. I'm just looking now, just looking at the painting and trying to determine how to proceed. I'm going to continue over here. Adding water first. And a little bit of the Payne's Grey here. These concentrated paints in the pans are sometimes so dark that you cannot tell what kind of color it is. It's hard to see the difference between Payne's Grey 
and black and purple and the darkest blue also. Now I'm going to pick up a touch of Windsor Red. Let's see what happens. Mixing right on the wet paper. I really have to work hard to make this uh, painting, to have it finished before the end of the year. Ooh, this is strong. But this is part of experimenting, trying new things. Picking up excessive paint here, going back in with paint gray. I hope you have a good quality watercolor paper because that makes all the difference when you start uh, when you start out with watercolor. There is this watercolor artist called. Uh, I believe his name is Steve Mitchell from uh, The Mind of Watercolor. Let's get back in with the raw umber. And somewhere in one of his videos he's explaining that if you are starting out with watercolor then the most important thing is the quality of the paper. And he is so right. I've tested it myself. I always had the best results on the Hanemühle Quattro paper. This paper that I'm using right now. And I've tried good quality, but not as good as this one. And I could not get similar results and uh, the more experience you gain the less important it becomes but as long as you are not very experienced then it is very important to have a good quality paper I want to add a touch of extra blue here and I believe we were we had phthalo blue. Let's add in a touch of phthalo blue. And then maybe later I can tone this down if necessary with a touch of uh, paints gray. Let's put in a touch of paint gray here. I'm really looking forward to springtime, guys. Do you see this? That white line? Happy accident. Yes. Here, let's have some uh, chocolates. Mm -mm -mm. And I have a glass of Coca-Cola with me. <laughs> what a difference. Yesterday I had uh, the juice. 
and today I have the opposite. Well, now I did my homework and I read all your comments and you taught me that this flower is called poinsettia. Well, I, I think I maybe I um, pronounce it wrongly, but something like that. And this one, I think, you know, the, 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 the needle-like leaves, it comes from a tree that is called a spruce. I believe that is what I'm, I drew here. And that is the Christmas tree, right? If I'm telling, saying things that aren't true, please, please um, write it down in a comment. I really appreci appreciate you helping me to um, gain uh, more, a larger vocabulary and uh, improving my English. My mother keeps telling me that... Uh, <laughs> That she says, uh, well, you you really don't speak as good. Your English is not as good as your two sisters and your youngest brother. But for some reason, um, people like uh, listening to you. Uh, goodness gracious. <laughs> well. My mom, she uh, years ago, she uh, decided that she needed to improve her own English. You know, back uh, she's born, she was born in the 1940s, in the middle of the Second World War, and in the 1950s, in the middle of the 1950s, uh, English uh, English class was not that. Uh, impressive here in the Netherlands and you know here I have a touch of the um, Windsor red back in those days English wasn't that important here in the Netherlands so A couple of years ago, she decided that she wanted to improve her English. I think it's about 10 years ago or even longer. And uh, she did a great job, I have to say. She, she decided to start ironing, doing the laundry in front of the television with an English dictionary with the BBC on and then with uh, subtitle subtitling for the d uh, deaf people deaf people deaf people deaf they are not dead they can't hear for deaf people so she could listen and read and search in her dictionary and uh, her english has improved uh, tremendously it's very impressive and now there are uh, most of the time she has English oh you are uh, the camera is falling most of the time my mother now watches uh, English and American programs.
yeah this looks good really good let's go here let's see So let's pick up Payne's Grey. And raw armor. And the lot the phthalo green light. A little bit more. Adding extra water over here. raw umber again you can see that i think not all pigments work the same way and here you can see that raw umber it granulates there are tiny bits of color in it tiny yeah granules and they are not completely, they are not water soluble, I think. And there are other pigments that are completely water soluble and you won't have these. These tiny granules. I will pick up a tiny bit of the um, phthalo green light. I love this color, very bright green, love it. I'm really looking forward to spring to see everything burst into bloom again. Now over here, let's see, I want to add more contrast. I believe I should use a touch of blue here. Let's give it a try. Phthalo blue.
a little bit more. You can immediately see that if the paper is not wet, the paint behaves completely different. The sun is shining. <laughs> now this uh, very uh, sharp ed angle you can see here in the sunshine, that is ex uh, actually uh, um, a part of the window here. <laughs> so it's a bit difficult to continue painting right now, but let's see if I can make make things work. I want to work on this area. Now let's take a look at this, it's over here, this is a leaf of the poin, poinsettia, poinsettia, I don't know how to, to say it, so please tell me how to pronounce it. I'm going to add a touch of water here and then I'm going to add Windsor Red. So, let it dry. Over here I need to do something. Let's add some blue first. So I stick with the phthalo blue. I'm not going to use any other blue. Maybe later, but I don't think so. And a touch of paint gray. Need a little more. Now, looking at the bells, I think I can do a little bit more work on them. I'm going to use the uh, Windsor and Newton series, series 7. I'm adding a little bit of water to the brush and then I'm picking up the raw umber. Because I think it needs a tiny a bit stronger look.
The strange thing is, with uh, drawing and painting, that um, if you watch, if you look at an object that you want to paint or draw, then you will have to look to really see what is there. And with this shiny bell, if I look at the bell, here it is, my mind keeps telling me you are seeing light colors because the bell has a light color. But because it is so shining, so shiny, it reflects what is here around me and then it also reflects um, dark things. And that is so interesting because I keep telling myself, of my mind keeps telling me the dark colors in this bell, that, that can, can't be true, but it is. So, I really, really have to be uh, aware of that and just do what I see and not do what I know. I know the, the bell is light colored a light yellow golden color but that is not what I see you see I don't see all, all light golden colors I do see that also but I also see dark tones that is so so important. Picking up a little more of that burnt umber and I'm putting that in here. There's a little bit too much water, so. This is sheer joy. I don't. I. I wish you could feel with our, how this brush is, just, so smoothly touching the paper with this paint coming out. So much joy. I promise myself to, uh, at least give myself one day of just painting in the, during the Christmas holidays. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> we have been too busy with uh, all not very nice things. Family, parties, Also doing uh, some stuff in and around the home, the house, you know. Needs to be done also, even during the holidays. I 
I think if I ever become a rich woman, really rich, then I will hire someone to do uh, to do the cleaning in the house. Yeah. That will give me lots of hours extra to do painting and other nice uh, creative things. Making more videos. I really love this. So let's uh, take a step back. This is really, really nice. Okay. <laughs>